Hello and welcome to U.S. News and World Report. I'm Simon Owens and here with me I have Claire Mulley, author of a biography on Christine Granville, argu arguably the most famous female spy during World War II. Welcome. Hello there. Uh, Claire, I was wondering if you could kind of set the stage and tell us how Christine came to be a British agent in Poland. Uh, yeah, well, she was born in Poland. She was a Polish countess and a beauty queen before the war, in fact. Um, but when uh, Germany invaded Poland in September 1939, she was actually in southern Africa uh, with her second husband, a diplomat. So by the time the passenger ship got back to Europe, unfortunately, Poland was already occupied. So she stormed into the British Secret Service headquarters and really demanded to be taken on. And I think they kind of laughed at her at first because, you know, A, she was foreign, she was part Jewish and wanted to go into Nazi-occupied Poland. And above all, of course, she was a woman and no woman, no other women would be employed for another two years. Um, but she had such a compelling case and argument and she was so charismatic, they decided to give her a go. And there's a wonderful memo that describes her as a, a fantastic skier, skier, a great adventuress and a gift they couldn't let up. So, um, so she volunteered and that's what she did. She used to ski from um, Hungary across the high Tatra mountains, taking in information and money and messages for the Polish resistance and bringing out information for the Allies. Well, you mentioned that she was Jewish. Can you talk about how her Jewish ancestry played a role in her own personal identity? Yes, I think it was very important to her. Her father was an, a Polish count, um, uh, in the aristocracy and she was brought up with a lot of freedom and adoration but because her mother was Jewish she was never really fully accepted in the higher echelons of Polish society and I think both of those things very much informed her character she was brought up used to having to fight for her corner as well and fight for respect um, and so those things came together for her and she was hugely patriotic but her, her patriotism for her country was very much also um, informed by her identity as being part Jewish as well. Um, and in fact, she did try very hard when she was in Poland undercover. She went to her mother and she tried to encourage her mother to leave the country. And she actually put in place a number of, um, a route for her mother to get out. But her mother refused to go. She said she'd, con she'd converted to Roman Catholicism and she was an aristocrat and she didn't want to leave her students in her secret school. Um, and so Christine could make various men do whatever she wanted, including some of the enemy, um, but she couldn't persuade her, her Jewish-born mother to leave Nazi-occupied Poland, and very sadly, her mother um, died in Pawiat prison in Poland, and that was something that weighed very heavily on Christine, of course. And do you think her role as a social outcast kind of made it so she had nothing to lose in some ways? Um, yes, yeah, so I think, in a way, Christine always strived to be centre stage, and uh, I've always laughed because centre stage is an anagram for secret agent. And she'd, she'd always been in the margins of society, partly because she was part Jewish. And she had um, suffered, unfortunately, as a result of that as a young woman. Um, but of course, if you are going to be in the secret services, you, your training in being in the margins is an excellent thing. And so that did help her very much later with her career um, as Britain's first special agent of the war. And what skills did she possess that made her a particularly good spy? Obviously, her ability to ski uh, allowed her to get into uh, Poland in the first place. She, she was Miss. She was named Miss Ski, I believe. Right? Yeah, she was. She was named Miss Ski in Poland before the war, also Miss Zakopane. And um, yes, I mean she could ski. That was just one thing. I mean she was. She was a great horsewoman. She was very physical. It was a very physically demanding job. She was very fit and so on. Um, but it was much more than that. She spoke many languages. She had a huge charisma. And time and again, you find the men that she worked with talking about how she could blind people in the searchlight of her gaze and so on. But she also knew how to blend in into a crowded room and just disappear as well. But I think the most important thing was she had this incredible blunt courage. There, there was nothing she wouldn't do um, for her country or for the people that she was working with. Um, and so there are the wonderful incidents. At one point she was arrested in uh, Budapest and she was taken away for interrogation. And uh, I think, you know, it, it was quite a brutal interrogation. Her partner was being beaten around the face and in the kidneys in the next room. Um, and she was already ill. Um, she had a terrible cough and, and flu. Um, but she decided to make a virtue of this apparent weakness. And what she did was bite her tongue so hard and so repeatedly that it bled not just a little bit, but quite copiously. So as she coughed, it looked as though she was coughing up blood. And uh, this seemed to be the symptoms of TB, tuberculosis. And the Germans were rightly terrified of this disease, mm. um, carried by waterborne droplets. You know, interrogation and TB don't mix. 
So um, they threw her out and she just had this, she always had this very ingenuity, she was very quick thinking and she had this real blunt courage and great determination, all things that made her an exceptional and very effective special agent. What kind of meaningful intelligence was she able to gather in Poland? Well, she brought back lots of things. Um, uh, various people in the resistance there were collecting data on um, new formulas the Germans were using in their weaponry, that sort of thing. She smuggled that out. She smuggled radio codes. Um, but perhaps the level of importance can be shown by this microfilm that she smuggled hi hidden inside her leather gloves, um, which she brought across various borders. And uh, she handed it over to the British attache in Sofia. And he sent it straight to Churchill's desk because this microfilm had the potential to change the entire course of the war. What it showed was a series of um, fuel and ammunition dumps and an invading army and um, preparing on the German side of the German-Soviet border. Clearly, I mean, this was the first film evidence for preparations for Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union, to land on Churchill's desk. And Churchill did take that information forward. So she was really carrying information at the highest level. Well, Christine had a lot of men in her life, obviously. Do you yes. think this is one reason why she's caused so much intrigue and fascination over the years? Yes. Well, well, partly. I mean, she was incredibly effective, so that's the key thing. She was the first special agent. But yes, she certainly was a very compelling personality. And my biography is actually called The Spy Who Loved because Christine was a woman who loved life in its biggest sense. She loved danger and adventure. She, she thrived on adrenaline um, and she loved men. She had two husbands and may have been going on to have her third. Um, and she had numerous lovers that she sort of left behind her, sometimes quite cruelly. Um, but above all, she loved freedom, uh, freedom for her country and the allies, but also freedom for herself personally. And those things were very intertwined for her. And I think you even begin your book uh, with a, a group of her former lovers and, and men in her life who were kind of conspiring together to yes. uh, basically protect her legacy. Yes, that's right. This is one of the staggering things I uncovered during my research. The reason that she's not been better known until now, uh, although she holds the honours at the highest level, is because after she, when she came to a terrible end, I don't want to give a complete spoiler, but after she died, um, this group of men who had adored her, including her soulmate, Andrew Kowarski, convened a group they called the Committee to Protect the Reputation of Christine Granville. And they didn't think that the world was ready, really, in 1952 to know everything about this extraordinary, passionate woman. Um, so they decided to keep it under wraps and they prevented various books, biographies, and even a biopic. There was going to be a film of her life star starring Sarah Churchill, the actress daughter of Winston Churchill, and that was stopped from going ahead. Um, because they, well, I think they were they were working for noble reasons. They wanted to honour her reputation. Although I think, um, arguably, since most of them had been her lover and many of them were married, they were trying to rep, you know, protect their own reputations as well to some degree. Um, so, so that's why her story has been kept secret for so long, really. And one of the nice things is during my research, you know, I found this out, but I also spoke to, interviewed a number of the children of these gentlemen um, who all felt, well, one of them said to me, you know, there aren't many war heroes who need a committee to protect their reputation. And they all now supported the idea of Christine getting the recognition that she so rightly deserves. And what did she do after the war was over? Well, Christine was left in terrible circumstances at the end of the war. In fact, the last British memo relating to her um, says simply she is no longer wanted. I mean, this is a black moment in our history. This is a woman who was told when she first volunteered that she might have just six weeks to live, but managed to survive the entire war despite being arrested several times and saved the, the lives of many of her, her male um, colleagues as well. And she served in three different theatres of the war. She survived six years working for Britain and yet at the end of the war she was completely dismissed and the terrible thing was although she was given you know very high military honours well civilian honours actually as a woman she couldn't um, she couldn't be given military honours um, but she wasn't given the prize she most valued which was British citizenship or ongoing work and so she could never return to Poland her home country because it was the first of the Allies, but the only Allied country to remain occupied at the end of the war. And her, the British had actually given her name to the NKVD, the precursors of the KGB, um, during the war. So she knew she couldn't return because she would be killed. Um, and yet she couldn't, she couldn't go to Britain either. Um, so she was a fighter. She fought and she did manage to get British um, citizenship and nationality. But I think it's a battle she shouldn't have had to fight. Um, and then she spent seven years um, living in London doing fairly 
pathetic jobs really you know she worked in Harrods selling um, dresses she worked as a hat check girl she worked in various cafes and so on and the emigre society and her colleagues all knew her and completely celebrated her but she was unknown and struggled a lot in those years well I know you said you didn't want to offer spoilers but it, it, I do think it interesting that her downfall uh, also tied into her allure with men yes a lot of people have said to me that um, you know, isn't it appropriate the way she died? Um, she lived for danger and she died in this terribly um, brutal way. Um, and um, am I allowed to give the ending away? I, I mean, it's it's history, so I think... Uh... Well, I'm, I'm very <laughs> sad to say that, uh, funnily enough, during the war, Christine, um, the, the course that she excelled in was silent killing, which is killing with just um, your hands... Uh, a rope or a knife, a commando knife, and she said that her knife was her favourite weapon throughout the war. She said guns were much too noisy. Um, and then terribly, at the end of the war, well, seven years later, she was actually stabbed to death through the heart with a commando knife, very much like the one that she had carried, um, by a stalker, someone she had known um, and, and worked with um, after the war. Um, and there are lots of conspiracy theories about this, that she perhaps, um, it was to do with her espionage work and so on. But I don't buy into those. I, I believe it was a crime of passion. And uh, I was fortunate enough, I, I applied under the Freedom of Information Act and managed to get out the files surrounding the court case um, and um, the trial of the killer and so on. And also, in fact, I managed to get in touch with the nephew of the man who killed her, who told me, you know, the family's perspective and the other side of the story, which is rather sad as well. Well, what would you say her greatest legacy was, especially in terms of the, the future of female spies? Yes. Well, I like to think if, if the book achieves anything or her, her life story can achieve something today, well, I suppose it's two things. One is to restore the knowledge about the role, the use and the abuse of Poland during the war. But the other thing is to rebalance the view on the effectiveness of female special agents. I think all too often women in the resistance are seen in these tragically romantic terms. Perhaps our most famous special agent is Charlotte Gray, and, and you know she's fictional, uh, and she also she goes out for love, um, which she doesn't really succeed in. And yet, even even the real agents that we rightly honour for their great courage, like Violet Zabo and Odette and Noreen Yat Khan, um, they 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 are celebrated for their courage rather than for their achievements. Christine was very courageous, but she was also extremely effective. Um, she converted an entire German garrison on a very strategic pass in the Alps. She um, saved the lives of numerous officers um, so they could continue their work to prepare for the American and Allied liberation of France from the South. Um, she had an amazingly successful war in terms of the information she brought, the men she exfiltrated across in enemy lines. Um, and so, if anything, I think it will hope to rebalance the view on the effectiveness of female special agents. Well, Claire, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. It's my very great pleasure. Thank you.